Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
You may be seated and invite the pres presenters to come forward at this time. We'll now hear the testimonials from Alan Canapole, President of the Standing Committee, and Bishop John Guernsey on behalf of the College of Bishops. Your Grace, I certify that on January 6, 2016, being the Feast of the Epiphany, meeting at Christ Church, Vero Beach, Florida, the College of Bishops of the Anglican Church in North America elected the Reverend Dr. Ronald Wayne Jackson to be the Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of the Great Lakes. 
Your Grace, as President of the Standing Committee, I certify that the Reverend Dr. Ronald Jackson was nominated for Bishop by the Extraordinary Synod meeting in Copley, Ohio, October 2nd, 2015, in conformity with the constitutions and canons of the Anglican Diocese of the Great Lakes. Thank you. Ron, the canons of this church require that no priest may be consecrated a bishop in the church until he has subscribed without reservation to the oath of conformity. In the presence of this congregation, I now charge you to make your solemn declaration of the same. I, the Reverend Dr. Ronald Wayne Jackson, do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary for salvation. And I consequently hold myself bound to conform my life and ministry thereto. And therefore I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them. And I do swear by Almighty God that I will, pray, I will pay true and canonical obedience in all things lawful and honest to the Archbishop of this church and to his successors, so help me God. I now invite you to sign the oath of conformity and the oath of canonical obedience in the presence of all these witnesses. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is written in the Gospel of St. Luke that our Savior Christ continued the whole night in prayer before he chose and sent forth his twelve apostles. It is written also in the Acts of the Apostles that the disciples at Antioch fasted and prayed before they sent forth Paul and Barnabas by laying their hands upon them. Let us therefore follow the examples of our Savior and his apostles. Offer up our prayers to Almighty God before we admit and send forth this person presented to us to do the work to which we trust the Holy Spirit has called him. So I invite you to kneel or to remain seated. The first tone of our litany is, Lord have mercy. The second tone of our litany is, O Lord our God. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Foley, our Archbishop, for Roger, our Bishop, Peter, our assisting Bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Ron, called to be a bishop in your church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
for the mission of the church that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for those who do not yet believe that they may receive the light of the gospel and for those whose faith has grown cold let us pray to the lord Lord, have mercy for the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the poor and the hungry, for the oppressed and the homeless, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Barack Obama, our president, John, our governor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, you Lord, 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 Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by your Son, Jesus Christ, gave many excellent gifts to your holy apostles, and charge them to feed your flock. Give your grace to all bishops, the pastors of your church, that they may diligently preach your word, duly administer your holy sacraments, and wisely provide godly discipline, and grant to your people that they may obediently follow them, so that we may receive the crown of glo everlasting glory through the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. The Word of God is given to Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. For you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. 
For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompenses. For I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will call righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen.
The New Testament lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 20, verses 17 through 35. From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. And when they came to them, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the entire the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house, as I testify to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If, I, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. Therefore I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God keeping watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work, we must support the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. And Jesus came and he said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. Uh, please remain standing. We'll pray together. Uh, before we pray, let me bring greetings from the Diocese of the Upper Midwest, your sister diocese here in the Midwest. Greetings from the Cathedral Church of the Resurrection, where I'm also rector. Greetings from my domestic church that Catherine, my wife, and I serve and lead and disciple with our six children. And most importantly, Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for my sins, rose again in power, ascended to the Father, and will one day come again to establish the new heavens and the new earth. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the already known, already prayed for, now being received descent of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the eternal Word of God. And we thank you for Mother Church. And we thank you that all that you are doing on this day, Lord, is for your glory and for your Son's mission of seeking and saving those who are far from God. So teach us each something today. Give us each something from Jesus for his work today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as many of you know, uh, Bishop-elect Ron, that may be the last time that title gets used, is quite a strategist. So when he called and asked me to preach his consecration homily, I couldn't help but wonder, what's the strategy? Why did he ask me? Is it that I'm one of the more inexperienced bishops? My rookie mistakes are still living, breathing, and pulsating for many to see. Indeed, even several minutes ago, before we processed in, I had this long red vest, the shamir, on backwards so that the tag, dry clean only, was there for all to see. <laughs> Were it not for a few older brother bishops that took mercy on me, the others, I now resent. <laughs> I'd be wearing it right now. And think how the gospel would be compromised by that. So was it that? I don't know. Was it that we're fellow sharers in a call to the Midwest? Indeed, that perhaps Ron and I, Amos, should pinky pack together, merge our diocese into one great diocese of the Midwest is best. Imagine an entire Midwestern nation, brothers and sisters, where all the children are above average. Where sweet corn on the cob is always just a, you know, arm's length away. Where people are friendly authentically. <laughs> We'd root for Indiana University basketball in the winter, Chicago Cubs in the summer, and maybe there's a football team from Ohio for the autumn. 
Uh, no, I, I think Ron asked me because we do share a deep Jesus heart that we might multiply churches in our day, that we might seek and save the lost, that we might see a revival of word and sacrament infused by the Holy Spirit in our generation. Indeed, we desire to spend our lives for that. Amen, brothers and sisters? That's the calling of the Lord upon us. And that calling takes the authority of the Lord. All authority, Jesus said, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And indeed, we understand that he shares that authority with a radical, unnerving generosity with all the people of God. And he gives his Holy Spirit upon young men and young women, old men and old women, upon all that they may do the ministry of the Lord. And he shares his authority with those he calls to the apostolic witness. In our tradition, the understanding of the work of bishop. So authority will be conferred upon you in several minutes, brother. Then what? Then what? What do we do with the authority of Jesus? What is at the heart of the authority of Jesus? Indeed, Ron, what I'd like to give to you today is a call to the application of the authority of Jesus. The application which he made very clear in some of his most authoritative words. The night before he was crucified, he said, a new commandment I give you, an authoritative word I give you. Only I have the ability to give a new commandment, to synthesize and strengthen the 10 words I have already given you. Love one another as I have loved you. My brother, as you come into the authority of Jesus for the sake of equipping the people of God to do the work of the ministry, may I call you simply to the work of love. May I call you to love others as he has loved you. Indeed, simply put, to choose the best for another, even when it costs you your best. To will the best for another, even at the greatest of costs. So I'm going to say a bunch of other stuff, and I want you all to hear it, but he's already going somewhere else. You can't help it when you're sitting here. I understand it. So you've got what I've given you. Love. Love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is love. Perhaps you're going... That's it. That's all we've got. Choose the best for another, even when it costs you. Let me tell a quick story about how hard that is. It's a fresh story, only several days old. So Catherine and I were near the end of the day. We were going to bed later than we intended to, which we do every night. And we were doing our reading at the end of the day. We were both in bed and Catherine says, oh, I left my chapstick downstairs. Now she wasn't, she doesn't play this way, she wasn't trying to get me to do it, but I thought I should go get Catherine's chapstick. But I don't want to. I'm reading my book, I'm settled in, I don't want to get her chapstick. I like where I am right now. I would like to choose my best for once. I chose everyone's best all day. I'm a pastor. She can get her own chapstick. Her best and my best collided. So what do we do? One of the teenagers came in to say goodnight and I said, hey, go get mom's chapstick. <laughs> we have to teach the next generation what it means to sacrifice. It's really hard to overcome the sinful nature, which is the nature of choosing the best for oneself. 
It's so hard to love one another, and especially as he has loved us. The costly choice. So Ron, three choices to encourage you today, three choices to call you as you go about the strategy that God has given you and you employ the gift of vision that God has given you. Let me give you these things first. Choose to listen. Choose the lost. Choose to father. When I say choose to listen, perhaps some of you go, aw, that's sweet. It's kind of therapeutic. Listening's not soft. Listening's only for the strong. You need a humility muscle to listen. You need to choose to listen in one of the most concrete ways that all of us and those of us who are called to serve in the church can express love for another. One of the most tangible ways we show our love is in a disciplined, muscular listening to another. I was in meeting for the last two weeks debriefing our last synod. We call it Revive. And it's fascinating how my 20-somethings are absolutely confident that I want to hear everything they think about what didn't go well at Revive. And they freely, when I ask them, and they're always respectful, tell me. And I've been doing listening in ministry for 24 years. But I cannot tell you how hard it is still, after all the hours I'd invested in Revive, after all the energy I put into it, after how good I felt after the conference was over, to hear one comment after another, all of them accurate, unfortunately, going to what things need to change. Everything in me wanted to react defensively. Everything in me wanted to say, no, no, wait, I appreciate your perspective, but I've been doing this longer, but I have greater authority. I'm the bishop. I'm the bishop. Me. <laughs> It's in there. It's in there. It's in you too. Right? Listen to me. We choose. We will to listen. And in doing so, we receive the body of Christ. We receive the people of God and the gifts they've been given. So simple, so difficult, so important. I was leading, helping lead a Latino mission. That was difficult because I don't speak Spanish. But one of the brothers in that mission said something to me that has utterly marked my pastoral ministry. And I know I'm doing well when I'm following what he said, and I know I'm not doing well when I don't. And he simply said to me, Listen to the people, Padre. Listen to the people. And of course, listen to the Lord. The day after I was consecrated, I was consecrated on a Saturday, so I got up in the morning and I put on a purple shirt. Whoa. I was driving over to the church, and honestly, I said to myself, I'm not proud of this, but I said to myself, I'm wearing a purple shirt. <laughs> and the Lord immediately spoke to my spirit and said, you're the same sinner today that you were yesterday. <laughs> it's the Lord's voice that empowers us to listen to the people of God, to do the hard work of listening. So Ron, as you seek to choose to listen, May I present you with the challenge I've given myself. I'm three years into the bishop work and I'm not there yet, but I'm almost there of doubling my time in prayer weekly. Double it. Double it. Don't get other things done. It's in prayer we learn to listen. We create the space for others to speak and ultimately for our Lord to speak. Choose for the lost. 
It is fascinating in our Lord's parable in Luke 15 that he talks about the 99 who the Lord loves that are the flock of Christ and the one sheep who goes missing. And that 99, if you're a J of any kind of the Myers-Briggs, that 99 makes you crazy. It's like a holy discontent number. You just want it to be 100, right? 99 is an irritating number. I'm a lit major. I don't know what it is in mathematics. It's just, for me, it irritates me. I want, I want 100. 99 begs fulfillment. 99 begs completion. 99 says, there's something missing. There's something missing when there's 99. See, there's something missing today. Oh, praise the Lord for the gathering of God's people. Oh, praise the Lord for Holy Mother Church. But Holy Mother Church, she, she's agitated in a way. She's unfulfilled in a way because the lost are not with us yet. And we let that gnaw at us. We let that create a holy discontent. We, we let that propel us out, out, out. The fulfillment may come in the power of Jesus. Now, 99 is a word that's supposed to make you itch. And say, like, ah, something's missing. Who else chooses for the lost if we won't? Who else will sit in meetings looking at budgets and go, hmm, where's the money for the lost? Who else will look at our iPhone, Google calendars and say, hmm, Where's the time for the lost? They're not asking for it. They're not here. They don't know how to ask for it. They would if they could. Recently, I had a young man come back into my life. I actually was his tech director in a junior high theater company 25 years ago in a town in Chicago area, Oak Park. Oak Park is one of, is one of the most militantly agnostic, atheistic communities within the greater Chicago area. And much to my shock a year ago, after not seeing this young man for 25 years, he showed up at Res at the guest center and he did every pastor's nightmare. Hey, remember me? Uh, yeah, uh, oh, I'm lying. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, help me, you know. And then he reminded me he'd been in my junior high theater company 25 years ago. And this is what he said. He said, hey, um, I'm interested in God, and I don't know anyone, and I've never known anyone who is serious about God. And I thought you took a class about God sometime that you mentioned when you were teaching us. He said, can we get coffee? And I had a minor crisis because there was nothing open in my schedule for coffee, for, I don't know, two months? What was I gonna say to Chris? Uh, call my assistant. What was I going to do? Did I have an itch? A 99 induced itch? I did move things around. I was given the privilege of sitting one on one with him. I did have an opportunity to help shepherd him through Alpha and I had the joy of baptizing him on Easter day morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But my point was I had to choose the lost. I know this is your all's deepest heart, but everything else will come at you and they'll all be really important. Everything will always really matter. Choose the lost. Finally, choose to father. How do you choose to mother? They're longing for it from us. They want that from us more than anything else. And it's one thing we have to give that is unique. So much of what we do as bishops is exactly what we all do together as the people of God. We're all on mission. We're all evangelizing. We're all ministering in churches. We're all reaching out. Over and over again in John, Jesus calls his followers technon, children, little children. He calls them in the resurrection appearance when they're out fishing children. 
on the night before he's crucified, little children. John, his follower, picks up on that, and throughout his first epistle, again and again, he says, children, little children. Paul, a celibate, is very clear that his ministry, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, is not to be one of many guys, but to be a spiritual father, that the hunger and the need that we can provide is to father and to mother with the love, the choosing the best for our people, even when it costs us dearly and deeply. I was in the middle of one of my larger Episcopal mistakes of the last three years. I was called into a parish that was in intense conflict. I had a vision of myself having worked through many conflicts, having a strength in church development, being good in conflict management, walking in and kind of like United Nations peacekeeping force being greeted as the person that would finally bring resolution. But before I knew it, two hours into the meeting, I was a combatant. I was part of the problem. I got engaged. I got overwhelmed. I got afraid. I got anxious. I got angry. It took six months to unwind the whole situation. I just helped wind it tighter. And at the end, when we were reconciling the vestry and me and different leaders and clergy, there was an Ivy League educated attorney. She had been my arch nemesis. And she said in tears, Stuart, all we wanted from you was for you to come in and father us. That's all we needed. And I broke. I just broke in that meeting. I was ashamed. I was rightly corrected by the people of God. I had not loved them like a father. I treated them like a situation. So choose, Ron. Choose to father. Choose will the best for your people even when it costs you. A new commandment he gave to us, love one another as he has loved us. That's the authority. That's the ministry of the gospel. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Ron, the Holy Scriptures and the ancient canons command that we should not be hasty in laying on hands and admitting any person to authority in the Church of Christ. 
which our Lord purchased with no less price than the shedding of his own blood. So before we admit you to this office, we will examine you in certain articles in order that this congregation here present may know how you will conduct yourself in the church of God. Ron, are you persuaded that you are truly called to this ministry according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ and the order of this church? I am so persuaded. Are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine required as necessary to eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined out of the Holy Scripture to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach or maintain nothing as necessary to eternal salvation but that which you shall be persuaded may be concluded and proved by the same? I am so persuaded and determined by God's grace. Will you then faithfully study the Holy Scriptures and call upon God by prayer for the true understanding of them, so that you may be able by them to teach and exhort with wholesome doctrine and withstand and convince those who contradict it? I will do so by the help of God. Are you ready with all faithful diligence to banish and drive away from the church all erroneous and strange doctrine contrary to God's word, and both privately and publicly to call upon others and encourage them to do the same? I am ready, the Lord being my helper. Ron, will you renounce all ungodliness and worldly lusts? live a godly, righteous, and sober life in this present world, so that you may show yourself in all things an example of good works for others, that the adversary may be ashamed, having nothing to say against you. I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Ron, will you maintain and set forth as much as it lie in you, quietness, love, and peace among all people, and diligently exercise such discipline as is by the authority of God's word and by the order of this church committed to you. I will do so by the help of God. Will you be faithful in examining, ordaining, sending, and laying hands upon others? I will by the help of God. Will you show yourself gentle and merciful Save of Christ to poor and needy people and to all those in need. I will with God's help. Let us now pray silently for the fulfillment of these purposes. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has given you a good will to do all these things, grant you also the strength and power to perform the same, that he accomplishing in you the good work which he has begun, you may be found perfect and without reproach on the last day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now sing together the Vinny.
congregation may please stand. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Almighty God and most merciful Father, of your infinite goodness you have given your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and to be the author of everlasting life. After he had made perfect our redemption by his death and resurrection and was ascended into heaven, he poured down his gifts abundantly upon his people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the edifying and perfecting of his church. Grant to this your servant such grace that he may be ever ready to propagate your gospel, the good news of our reconciliation with you, and use the authority given to him, not for destruction, but for salvation, not for hurt, but for help, so that as a wise and faithful steward, he will give to your family their portion in due season, and so may at last be received into everlasting joy. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the Church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Most merciful Father, send down upon this your servant your heavenly blessing. So endue him with your Holy Spirit, that he, preaching your holy word, may not only be earnest to reprove, beseech, and rebuke with all patience and doctrine, but he may also, to such as believe, present a wholesome example in word, in conversation, in love, in faith, in chastity, and in purity, that faithfully fulfilling his course, at the last day he may receive the crown of righteousness laid up for us by our Lord Jesus Christ, our righteous judge, who lives and reigns with you in the same spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Thank you. Stand right over here. Now I'd like to invite Patty to come forward and have the wives of the bishops come and pray for her in her new role as a bishop's wife.
Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. The new bishop is now vested according to the order of bishops. Ron, come on out here. There we go. That mic. Thank you. Remember that you are always under the Word of God. Amen. Give heed to reading, exhorting, and teaching. Think upon the things contained in this book. Be diligent in them that your growth in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ may be evident to all. In doing this, you shall save yourself and those who hear you. Be to the flock of Christ a shepherd, not a wolf. Feed them, do not devour them. Hold up the weak, heal the sick, bind up the broken, bring back the lapsed to seek the lost. Do not confuse mercy with indifference, and so minister discipline that you forget not mercy. That when, the sheep, that when the chief shepherd appears, you may receive the never fading crown of glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Take the staff, the staff and watch, watch over, over the, the flock, flock of Christ. Christ. Receive the anointing, the anointing of this, this oil, oil and, and remember continually. continually to stir, stir up, up the grace of God, of God which is which given, given to you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Amen. Receive this cross. Remember that he whom you serve reconciled us by his own blood. Amen. Take, Take this, this ring, ring and be, be faithful, faithful to, to the bride, bride of Christ. Christ. Receive these Episcopal garments, the stole which represents the yoke of the Lord, for his yoke is easy and his burden light. The cope which symbolizes charity, for God is well able to give you an increase of charity and make perfect your work. Amen. Receive this mitre and remember that the authority rests in God's Word and Holy Spirit. Amen. Patty, will you come up? I invite you now to greet your new bishop and his wife.
Bishop, would you like to say anything? It's overwhelming. But the Lord is faithful. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Hey! 
Yeah. 